They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't, don't let their secret out. Traffic light. Red. Yellow. Green. All right, let's go. Tub Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Stop now. There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate fire. You have to let the train pass. Wow, that is cool. Hi there, Nolik. Come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop. <gasps> <gasps> Did you lose your mind? What were you doing, huh? I... I wanted to see what a cool traffic light it is. What? And my dad just... just got this for me today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear. Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right. <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is blue is brown is gray. With polka dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right, what color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do, so take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes, and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. All fixed. Tom Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. Is it 
right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. You know what you are? You're a fainter. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a fainter, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the frying pan. Skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes shut. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What, what will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixies' favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> So, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure, say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Like always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake! What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. Hey, this is salt. That wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again. But this time we play by the rules. Oh. Look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. And they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. 
It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it, because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? Mmm, these crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-oh. <laughs> The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia! Mm -hmm. Yes, Elisa? The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Sipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout-out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way, everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron soul plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the soul. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron soul, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no, the poor iron won't last. Phew, and it smells like crud. I broke the iron, it's awful. No, 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 <gasps> Elisa, don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony, and you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> <laughs> I... Elisa, hang in there. Be careful. Elisa. I... Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're going to go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it! Your iron is fixed! Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working! What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why, since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. 
In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. Irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix... Uh... Uh... uh to all the fix -assists. Just give me the prize. Oh, that was quick thinking. Brilliant! He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> Well, practically perfect. <laughs> the copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you. I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers. No, look, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, my briefcase, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find mm. your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming out. We have to hide. <laughs> Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone, the flyer for when the professor gets lost. Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? There's Nolik, in printed form. <gasps> he got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait, uh... Oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nolik. Here comes another one. Make sure he's covered. And here. Not everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great artwork of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if 
the original of a document happens to get destroyed. At least there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. I'm a little bit here. Uh, Simka! I can't see! We're right over here. Boom! The light's so bright in there. I almost went blind. And we had to take every one of those copies and paint over all of them. So that humans won't find out about Pixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> There they are. <laughs> Elisa! 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 She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah, and I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> <laughs> the Fixie Phone. Tom Thomas! Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. A, a race car. No, not that. Chocolate. A, p a pair of socks. Ha! <laughs> Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! Ah, you got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papu's. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. No, Link. Don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. See that? So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixies' favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as fixie phones. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super! Oh, it'd be great to have my own fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. Uh, he gets so upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. <laughs> my smartphone's my best friend. I love to hear it beeping. So I keep it by my side even when I'm sleeping. Even when I'm sleeping With my phone I play alone I don't need my brother Soon 
I'll make a brand new app to replace my mother. Bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long to replace my mother. Check my mail, send a text a million times an hour. I forgot to plug it in, now I'm out of power. Bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, now I'm out of power. Bing bong all day long. Look, it's a surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Nolik, just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papus is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the Fixie's numbers from it. But how can I call you up, then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. The Manipulator. Well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Uh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. There, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh dear, what's going on? <gasps> Stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in. <gasps> Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. <sighs> Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. 
For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily, like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water, or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Uh, uh, achoo! Ah! 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 No, no lick? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa! Elisa! Professor Eugenius, I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop. Stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? <laughs> the kaleidoscope. Tom Thomas, when are you going to give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Oh! So, can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. What for? I looked already. Come on, there's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Glass, right? Uh-huh. It's great, I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh! Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. No! Oh, that's just terrible! Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me! With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? <laughs> Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh... That didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid new Christmas 
Oh, what's what? wrong? Ugh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah. Merry Christmas. Thanks so much. Now don't you feel good again? Yeah, it's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it. It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye in the kaleidoscope. Shimmering scenes, gingerbread trees in the kaleidoscope. Magical flowers just bloom. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends or some ball hanging from a tree? The stain. <laughs> What's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf-portrait, it's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like this superhero I see here on this paper? Uh, how can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas, your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. <laughs> Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Pencil marks. An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea. We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah. That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? <sighs> uh, any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot 
remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is. Cheerful and kind. Ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula will believe anything you tell her, which is really great because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid. That looks great. And how about down there? Wow. It's like fireworks. Splendid. There's a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, oh, my little artist. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy. Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. <laughs> Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Yeah, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells, and squirrel skins, and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins, or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it, and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, 
You can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins! Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing, folks. Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik, I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. The zipper. Hey, Nolik, look. Why did Tom Thomas go to sleep like that? Maybe it was some kind of homework for one of his classes. Uh-huh, gym class homework. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. You're looking good. My parents just bought it for me. Isn't it a cool jacket? And what, you slept in it all night? Yeah, once I tried it on, I didn't want to take it off, and I fell asleep in it. Yeah, life's never boring with you around. Oh, I think the zipper got stuck. And so what? You can leave your coat on no problem. You're about to go to school, right? And you think I could sit in my class like this? How could I have broken the zipper? Don't worry, you haven't broken it, not yet. Here is a simple zipper. It is made with two rows of small teeth that pass through a slider. The slider has two holes on the top and only one hole on the bottom. When we pull the slider up along the zipper, the teeth grab onto each other and the two rows join together into one. And zip! The zipper is closed. To open it, all you need to do is pull the slider in the opposite direction. Then the teeth will come apart. But on mine, they're stuck together. And now what? What do people do in the morning? Do what they do. Exercise. And I'll have time to think it over. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three. And, and then what about me? Uh, go exercise, too. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simka, come on, think of something. I'm sweating already. <sighs> Soon, okay? Go get washed up in the meantime. Whew. Do you think I could help you think? I think not. I think you'd be better off washing. How's it going, Tom Thomas? 
Didn't we think of anything yet? What? Didn't we think of anything yet? Ah, gotcha. Nope, she hasn't thought of anything so far. <sighs> it's so hot. Just pretend you're a polar scientist. They always work in their parkas. And you know what? I'll be the penguin. Hey, where are you going? Uh, I can't take it anymore. All right, just sit right here, and I'll try to find the problem. <laughs> you see? That polar scientist game's funny, huh? <laughs> That's not it. It's Simcoe. <laughs> She's tickling so hard. Stop squirming. And you stop tickling me. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's why it won't open all the way. It's only a piece of thread stuck in there. Pull the slider up. <laughs> Tiddish! You can unzip it now. <gasps> Thanks so much. Here it is. A thread. That's what the whole problem was. You're kidding. So I've been sweating because of some piece of nothing? In technology, every little thing matters. I remember when scientists built one of the first computers around 60 years ago. It was a giant machine. It filled up several rooms and had more than a million parts. It was a technological wonder. But all of a sudden, this technological wonder went kaboom and broke, and no one understood why. The computer just stopped working, and that was that. The scientists were going crazy. They couldn't find a problem. Turns out that this huge computer broke because a little butterfly had flown inside the computer and got stuck in between some contacts. Yes, it's true. This huge machine went crazy because of a little butterfly. And that's how it goes. So you see, every little thing really does matter. Tom Thomas, breakfast is ready. What are you doing in your jacket? It's because I was playing Polar Scientist. Hmm. Simka, what took you so long to figure it out? I just... Just thought it would be funny to see Tom Thomas do his exercises and brush his teeth in his coat, that's all. That was your plan? Well, yeah. Can I joke around a bit? <laughs> the washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh. It's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on. We're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time, I'm really going to let you have it. <laughs> Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! Whoa! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? Huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
There are a lot of things to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer, too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, it sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! The stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores. Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes, and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do Tom. It. You can do it. Yeah. Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah. How will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey! I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Uh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The stapler. 
staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time. And a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space. And the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate. And that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go. The papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. <laughs> <laughs>